ವಿದ್ಯಾರ್ಥಿಗಳಿಗೆ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ನಾನು ಸುಜಾತ ಎಸ್ ಲೆಚ್ಚರ್ ಇನ್ ಕೆಮಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿ ಗೌರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಪಿ ಯು ಕಾಲೇಜ್ ಬೆಳ್ಮನ್ ಕಾರ್ಕಳ ತಾಲೂಕು ಉಡುಪಿ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿಕ್ಟ್ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಟುಡೇ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೈನ್ ಮೈ ಎದ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದಿ ಸರ್ಫೇಸ್ ಕೆಮಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿ ಟಾಪಿಕ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಸರ್ಫೇಸ್ ಕೆಮಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿ ವಿ ನೋ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಸರ್ಫೇಸ್ ಕೆಮಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿ ಡೀಲ್ಸ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ಸ್ಟಡಿ ಆಫ್ ಸರ್ಫೇಸ್ ಸಸ್ ಆರ್ ಇಂಟರ್ಫೇಸಸ್ ಓಕೆ ಹಿಯರ್ the interface or surface is represented by the bulk faces by i1 i1 means like this or slash here let us study some of the uh, wordings or terminologies coming under this chapter first one is adsorption the phenomenon of attracting or retaining the of molecules of a substance on the surface of a liquid or solid resulting into higher concentration of the molecules on the surface than in the bulk is called adsorption here adsorbate and adsorbent are the two terms are there okay adsorbate means the molecules species or molecular species which accumulates at the surface that is called as adsorbate adsorbent means the surface on which the adsorption takes place and one more terminology that is occlusion it is a new term the adsorption of gases on metal surface is called as a occlusion for example hydrogen get adsorbed on the surface of nickel desorption the process of removing of adsorbed particles from the surface on which get it is adsorbed it is called as desorption absorption is a one more term it is a process where a gas or liquid penetrates into the body of the adsorbent for example if you consider sponge dipped in water water molecule move into or penetrate into the body of the sponge that process is called as absorption next one is sorption if both adsorption and absorption takes place simultaneously then it is called as sorption what are the factors affecting adsorption nature of the adsorbent nature of the adsorbate surface area of the adsorbent temperature and pressure types of adsorption we know that there are two types of adsorption one is physical adsorption or physisorption another one is called as chemical adsorption or chemisorption physical adsorption means here the attracting force exist between the surface of the adsorbent and adsorbate is weak van der waals force he is a weak van der waals force for example adsorption of chlorine on charcoal means a chlorine is get adsorbed on the surface of charcoal by weak van der waals force chemical adsorption here strong bonds are formed between adsorbate and adsorbent for example adsorption of oxygen on the surface of tungsten let us discuss the differences between physical adsorption physisorption and chemical adsorption first one nature means selectivity physical adsorption it is general in nature in most of the case, cases physical adsorption is possible but chemical adsorption is very specific similar uh, for example uh, easily liquefiable gases are adsorbed easily okay next nature of bonding as we know that the definition of physical adsorption in where there exists a weak van der waals forces while in the case of chemical adsorption strong chemical bonds are exist enthalpy of adsorption physical adsorption involves low enthalpy or 20 to 40 kJ per mole while that of chemical adsorption involves 80 to 240 kJ per mole reversibility if you see physical adsorption as it is weak it is reversible chemical adsorption as it is strong it is irreversible structure 
means uh, number of layers formed. In the physical adsorption, multi-layer formation is possible, while in the case of chemical adsorption, monolayer is possible. Effect of pressure. As the pressure increases, physical adsorption increases, means physical adsorption becomes strong. But in the case of chemical adsorption, increase in pressure decreases the adsorption. Effect of temperature. With increase in temperature, extent of adsorption decreases in the case of physisorption. Means a desorption may be possible as the temperature rises. But in the case of chemisorption, extent of adsorption first increases with increase in temperature up to certain extent and then decreases. Activation energy. For a physics option, no appreciable energy is needed, but while in the case of chemist option, high activation energy is required. Let us move to the adsorption isotherms. We know that iso means same, therm means a temperature. Adsorption isotherms means a graph representing variation between the amount of gas adsorbed per gram of the adsorbent that is x by m and equilibrium pressure p of the adsorbate is called adsorption isotherm. We are going to study two types of adsorption isotherm. One is Friendlich's adsorption isotherm and another one is Langmuir's adsorption isotherm. In the board exam, uh, for the board exam already we studied about Friendlich's adsorption isotherm. In the case of Friendlich's adsorption isotherm, it is given as Friendlich's adsorption isotherm mathematical form is x by m is equal to k into p to the power 1 by n where n is more than 1. Okay. This is about Friendlich's adsorption isotherm. But the Friendlich's adsorption isotherm it is not applicable at a high pressure. What about Langmuir's adsorption isotherm? Langmuir's adsorption isotherm depends on kinetic theory. Okay, let us see the difference between them. See, Friendlich's adsorption isotherm relationship between the quantity of gas adsorbed by unit mass of solid adsorbent and pressure at a particular temperature, particular or constant temperature, that is why it is iso, isotherm. Langmuir's adsorption isotherm means on the basis of kinetic theory, Langmuir derived an expression for adsorption isotherm. We know that mathematical form of Friendlich's adsorption isotherm is, as I said, x by m is equal to k into p to the power 1 by n. This is power 1 by n, where n is greater than 1. Or if you take logarithm on both sides of this equation, you will get log x by m is equal to log k plus 1 by log p. It follows y is equal to mx plus c equation. So if you take this as y, this is a, this as mx, this is c. So if you plot x versus y along the x-axis log p, along the y-axis log x by m, we will get a straight line which intersects the y-axis that is why intercept is log k and slope, slope is nothing but m, m is 1 by n. If you come to the Langmuir's adsorption isotherm, it is given as p by x by m is equal to 1 by k dash plus k by k dash into p. On simplification, we will get x by m is equal to k dash p divided by 1 plus k p. So, here also, if you plot pressure along x axis and P by x by m along y axis will get a straight line with the intercept 1 by k dash and this angle is theta means he will get a straight line. So let us apply the values for the P. 
In the case of Friendlich's adsorption isother, the factor 1 by n can have values between 0 to 1. When 1 by n is equal to 0, then we can write it as Okay, so we know that here x by m is equal to k into p to the power 1 by n. If 1 by n is equal to 0, then x by m becomes k into p to the power 0 is equal to 1. So x by m is equal to k. So x by m is equal to constant you'll get which shows that adsorption is independent of pressure because no p term is present here. When 1 by is equal to 1, then x by m becomes equal to k into p or we can say that x by m is proportional to p. So, x by m is proportional to p, the adsorption varies directly with the pressure. Let us move to the Langmuir adsorption isotherm. When pressure is very high, then from the, on simplification I said, it is equal to k dash p divided by 1 plus kp. Okay. When pressure is very high, then 1 plus kp is equal to kp. So, k dash p by kp is equal to k dash k dash uh, pp get cancels, only constant remain. So, we can say that x by m is equal to k dash by b by kp when pressure is very high then 1 by kp is equal to nearly equal to 1 that is x by m is equal to k dash p that is x by m is proportional to pressure. So when pressure is moderate then x by m is kp to the power 1 by n, it, 1 by n lies between 0 and 1. So we can say that Friendlich's adsorption isotherm which was not explained at high pressure which is explained by Langmuir's adsorption isotherm. Okay. What are the applications of adsorption? We know that adsorption process has got many applications like softening of hard water uh, during process, during the process calcium and magnesium ions are removed by adsorbing on zeolite. Then decolorizing of sugar syrup, vegetable oil, then in gas masks, those who are working in the mines, uh, for them uh, gas masks are used to prevent the poisonous gases, then heterogeneous catalysis means uh, nickel is adsorbed on hydrogen, that process. Activated charcoal is used to weave high vacuum by adsorbing last traces of gases, then silica gel is used to adsorb moisture in air and in chromatography. And one more point we have to remember during adsorption, what is the cause for the adsorption? We know that whenever adsorption takes place, adsorption is a surface phenomenon, only in the surface the process takes place. The molecules which are present in the bulk experience forces from all the side equally. But Whenever the, those molecules are present in the surface, there exist a unbalanced forces. That is why adsorption takes place only on the surface. During this process, we can say that enthalpy change always negative means uh, heat is released. Okay. What about change in free energy? Energy also decreases, hence delta G, change in Gibbs free energy also negative. And what about entropy? Before adsorption, the molecules are away from each other, they are highly stable. But once they get adsorbed, their freeness or randomness decreases. So entropy also decreases, that is why it is also negative. So we can remember that during adsorption, all the three factors, change in, change in enthalpy, change in free energy, change in entropy, all are negative. Okay. 
let us move to the next part of this chapter that is catalysis catalysis is a branch of chemistry we know that where catalyst is used to, to alter the rate of reaction a catalyst is a substance which accelerates the rate of a chemical reaction and itself remains chemically and quantitatively unchanged means whatever the amount of catalyst used it remain as it is 10 gram is used means it remains 10 gram it may change its physical state okay similarly chemically it may not be changed for example manganese dioxide used in the decomposition of potassium chloride next catalytic promoters promoters means increasing so promoters are substances that enhance the activity of uh, or capacity of the uh, catalyst for example ammonia is manufactured by Haber's process in the presence of catalyst class called as iron there molybdenum act as a promoter similarly the catalytic activity are reduced by using catalytic poisons catalytic poisons are substances which block the active centers present on the surface of a catalyst and hence decrease the efficiency of the catalyst active tense active centers means where the catalytic activity is more okay it may be in for fractions or cracks etc for example in the manufacture of sulfuric acid if arsenic impurities are present they are removed in the beginning only otherwise they may reduce the catalytic activity okay characteristics of catalysts a catalyst remain unchanged in mass and composition at the end of the reaction however they may there may be a physical change as i said in the beginning a catalyst cannot start a chemical reaction a catalyst is specific in action means for all the reaction same catalyst may not be used for particular reaction particular catalyst is used a catalyst cannot the change the position of equilibrium means equilibrium may be reached earlier it uh, increases the rate of forward reaction as well as rate of the backward reaction every catalyst has an optimum temperature at which its activity is maximum on the temperature it all activity maximum irutha catalyst it a catalyst is usually used in small quantity since they are not destroyed on the small amount sa sakagutte for a reaction to carry catalytic promoters increase the catalytic activity of a catalyst catalytic poisons destroy the catalytic catalytic activity of a catalyst types of catalyst we can divide the catalyst as positive catalyst as well as negative catalyst positive catalyst means which increases the rate of reaction negative catalyst means which decreases the rate of reaction so we can say that nickel in hydrogenation of oil is a positive catalyst similarly glycerol or acetylide in the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide act as a negative catalyst types of catalysis homogeneous catalysis homo means same here the physical state of the reactants and the uh, catalyst are in the same phase for example manufacture of sulfuric acid here one of the step is sulfur dioxide oxidized to sulfur trioxide here we can use nitric oxide in gaseous state so nitric oxide act as a catalyst it becomes a homogeneous nitric oxide in gaseous state sulfur dioxide gaseous state and oxygen is in the gaseous state heterogeneous catalyst we can take the example of formation of ammonia by using dinitrogen and dihydrogen in the presence of iron catalyst iron in a solid state while nitrogen and hydrogen in gaseous state so they are in different phase hence it is example for a heterogeneous catalysis adsorption theory of heterogeneous catalysis according to this theory the reaction involves following steps whenever adsorption takes place there are five steps are involved one is diffusion of reactant molecules on the surface of the catalyst first step is diffusion of molecule on the surface of the catalyst first ge bandu molecule alli kootkolidru okay next adsorption of reactant molecules on the surface catalyst surface catalyst mein adsorbed molecule get uh, sorry molecule get adsorbed next 
reactants combine together at the surface of surface to form to form first an intermediate which finally forms a product means first it forms intermediate it is highly unstable later it forms a product next desorption of products takes place from the surface of catalyst once reaction is over they get dissolved last the catalyst is again available for further reaction once a reaction is over the same catalyst is used for the another reaction so these are the five steps involved in the uh, heterogeneous catalysis important features of solid catalysts activity the activity of the catalyst is its capacity to increase the speed of the chemical reaction okay the ability of a catalyst depends on strength of the chemisorption strength of the chemisorption but reactant must not get adsorbed to so strongly and the tight agi idu kondre enagutade chemical bond formation adra matte further reaction ge that catalyst may not be available so so strongly they are immobilized and the other reactants are left with no space on the catalyst surface for adsorption next one selectivity the selectivity of catalyst is its ability to direct a reaction to yield a particular product means uh, catalyst is selected in such a way that even though we are starting from same reactant the product formed may be different okay so selectivity of different catalyst for same reactant is different for example starting with hydrogen and carbon monoxide starting with hydrogen and carbon monoxide different products are possible with different catalyst for example if you use one molecule of carbon monoxide three molecules of hydrogen in the presence of nickel catalyst is forms it forms methane and water see same reactant carbon monoxide and uh, hydrogen but catalyst is copper in the presence of zinc oxide and chromic oxide it forms methanol carbon monoxide and hydrogen in the presence of copper it forms a formaldehyde so from this we can say that here the reactants are same carbon monoxide and hydrogen but the ratios may be different and catalysts are different in the first case it is nickel second case copper in zinc oxide and chromic oxide last case is copper hence the product formed are also different product formed are also different so we can say that same reactant is used but catalysts are different to form different products the catalytic reaction that depends on the pore structure of the catalyst and the size of the catalyst the size of the reactant and product molecules is called a shape selective catalyst okay zeolites here zeolites is used which is a good shape selective catalyst because of its honeycomb like structure okay zeolites are the good shape selective catalyst because these catalyst pore size is as in required case okay it is like honeycomb like a structure next next one is active centers the active centers are isolated atoms or peaks or cracks or we generally we can say that these are the imperfections on the solid surface solid surface of the catalyst where catalytic activity is more or maximum at the active centers there are large number of residual valencies or free valencies which can be used for adsorbing reacting molecules auto catalysis as the name indicates see here one of the product formed during a reaction during a catalytic reaction one of the product formed act as a catalyst for that reaction so it if one of the products of a reaction itself act as a catalyst for the that reaction their phenomenon is called as auto catalysis here for example during the reaction between oxalic acid and potassium permanganate the mn2 plus ion act as a auto catalyst okay next enzyme catalyst enzyme catalyst means these are the biomolecules enzymes are complex nitrogenous organic compounds which are produced by living plants or animals they are high molecular mass protein molecules they form colloidal solution in water and very effective catalyst very effective means they can carry out millions of reaction at a time 
they catalyze numerous biochemical reactions hence termed as biochemical catalyst and the phenomenon is known as biochemical catalysis biochemical this is catalysis okay enzyme catalyzed reactions which are the enzyme catalyst reaction we can find many examples we know that inversion of cane sugar in the presence of enzyme called as invertase zymase used for the conversion of glucose and fructose to ethyl alcohol enzyme maltase is used for conversion of maltase maltose to glucose the enzyme amylase converts starch into maltose the enzyme tallin converts starch into glucose so these are the some of the examples for the uh, catalyst enzyme catalyst okay example for the catalyst which are used in the different different processes for example as we know that manufacture of ammonia by haber's process iron is a catalyst preparation of sulfuric acid by contact process vanadium pentoxide pentoxide or platinized asbestos is the example preparation by oswald's process of what nitric acid platinum is example uh, catalyst or rhodium gauze hydrogenation of oil carried out in the presence of carried out in the presence of nickel preparation of methyl methanol is carried out in the presence of zno and cr2o3 bosch process for the preparation of hydrogen fe2o3 dehydrogenation of alcohol by copper okay so this is the second part of the this chapter that is a, a cat, uh, catalyst okay next uh, colloids okay colloid is a state of the substance it is a heterogeneous system in which one substance is dispersed in very fine particle of the another substance the particle particles which are distributed are called as dispersed phase in which medium it is distributed it is called as a dispersion medium it is like a solute and solvent dispersed phase is like solute and dispersion medium is like a solvent okay this state of the substance we can classify it into uh, three types that is first one is true solution true solution another one is colloid next one is suspensions suspensions okay that is depending on the size of the uh, sorry particles true solution particles where diameter of the particle is less than 1 nanometer while in the colloid it is between 1 to 1000 nanometer if it is more than 1000 nanometer then it is a suspended particles okay so let us discuss about the colloids so from this only we can understand these are in smaller size these are in the medium next larger one is suspended particles okay classification of colloids depending on the physical state of dispersed phase and dispersion medium we know that colloids are classified into many category depending on different categories one is a physical state of dispersed phase and dispersion medium actually there are eight colloidal systems depending on physical state of dispersed phase and dispersion medium gas in gas is not exist since it forms a homogeneous mixture we know that colloidal system is a heterogeneous so homogeneous system it is not exist that is why in the beginning only written gas in gas one phase system air is example which is a not a colloidal system okay because it forms homogeneous but liquid in gas in liquid gas is a dispersed phase in medium liquid it is called as a foam example soap lather whipped up cream etc gas in solid solid soul pumice stone foam rubber liquid in gas aerosol fog clouds mist liquid in liquid that is emulsion milk hair cream butter etc okay liquid in solid gel cheese butter etc example solid in gas aerosol liquid in gas soul solid in solid 
solid in liquid soul, solid in solid, solid soul. Okay, example is some colored glasses or gemstones or alloys also we can give the example. Okay. Next, second classification based on the nature of the interaction between dispersed phase and dispersion medium. That is lyophilic colloids and lyophobic colloids. In the case of lyophilic, lyophilic means attraction is more, phobic means attraction is less. Dispersed phase and dispersion medium, if attraction is more, then it forms lyophilic, attraction is not present, then it is a lyophobic colloid. So that is why interaction is strong, here weak. How they are prepared? Lyophilic colloids are prepared just by mixing. Okay, for example, by mixing substances like gum, gelatin with the suitable liquid. In the dispersion medium, we will get a lyophilic colloids. While lyophobic by special methods, by passing electric current or some chemical methods are employed. Okay, next one, reversibility. Since it is strong, we can say that just by heating, we can separate them. That is reversible. Lyophobic is irreversible. Stability. More attraction towards medium is present. Hence, lyophilic are more stable. Less attraction towards the medium. Hence, it is less stable. Viscosity. Lyophilics are higher than the medium because strong attraction is present. Lyophobic, their separation is more. So, that is why same as a medium. That is the difference between lyophilic and lyophobic colloids. Okay. Next, third classification depending on the type of particles of dispersed phase. One is multimolecular colloid. Here, solutions, these solutions consist of aggregate atoms or small atom means whose size is less than the colloid, they aggregate together to form a particles of colloidal size. Okay. Example, gold sore S8 molecule means sulfur molecule, etc. Sulfur molecule S8. Okay. Next one is second category that is under this one macromolecular colloids. In these colloids, dispersive phase are themselves large molecules, usually polymers. Here, in the case of macromolecular colloids, they come to the required size, okay, in suitable solvent. For example, most lyophilic salts belong to this category, starch, protein, etc. come under macromolecular colloids. Associated colloids. Associated colloid comes under, uh, uh, formed when, whenever some substances which at low concentration behave like true particles or uh, electrolytes. But at higher concentration, they act as a colloidal solution. Okay, they aggregate together. The aggregated particles thus formed are called measles or associated colloids. Here one more term comes that is CMC. That is critical measles concentration. Critical measles concentration means uh, there is minimum concentration required. Above that only they form associated colloid. Below that it is not possible. And the temperature required the formation of this measles is called as craft temperature. This is called as craft temperature. So this is about the classification of colloids depending on type of the particles of the dispersed phase. Next, preparation of colloids. Okay. In the preparation of colloids, some chemical methods are employed. For example, arsenous sulfide sole can be prepared by arsenous oxide treating with uh, hydrogen sulfide by double decomposition method. Next, sulfur sole can be prepared from sulfur dioxide and hydrogen sulfide by oxidation process. Similarly, ferric hydroxide sole can be prepared by ferric chloride on hydrolysis. Next, electrical disintegration or Bredig's arc method. It is used for the preparation of souls like gold, platinum, silver, etc. The metals which undergoes oxidation easily, for them it is not employed. employed. Peptization, process of converting precipitate into colloid soul by shaking with suitable electrolyte that is called as a peptization. So these are the three methods of preparation of colloids. 
Next, purification of colloidal solutions. How they are prepared? We know that the colloids are stable whenever limited amount of charge is present on them. The excess of charge must be removed. So for this, purification is required. One is dialysis. Here excess of charge is removed by taking colloidal solution in a semi-permeable membrane. Semi-permeable membrane allows colloidal particle, sorry, allows only true solution to pass through but not the colloidal particles. Second one, electrodialysis. The dialysis method can be made faster by using electric current that is called as electrodialysis. Ultrafiltration, it is a uh, filtration by specially made filter paper. Okay, that is ultra by using collidion solution, ultrafiltration. Next, properties of colloids. Colligative property. Colligative property means these are the properties which depends on number of particle but not on the nature. Okay, that is shown by colloidal particles. Tyndall effect. Tyndall effect means scattering of light. Scattering of light. This is a one of the important property of colloids. Okay, so the scattering of light such that the uh, whenever we observe using a specially made microscope, it uh, shining, it looks like shining. Okay, next color. Color also depends on the how the scattering of light takes place. For example, blue color, uh, blue color of the sky is due to the uh, this phenomenon. Next, Brownian moment. Brownian moment means the zigzag moment of the particles of the colloids, because it is due to the kinetic energy, the bombardment of molecule takes place. So, this Brownian moment causes not to settle down the colloidal particle. Charge on the colloidal particle. As I said in the beginning, the minimum charge on the colloidal particle is must. Okay. Whenever this charge is removed, the colloid molecules aggregate together, then they form a precipitate. So minimum amount of charge is must for the colloidal particles. Okay. So colloids process a respective charge by uh, adsorption of the common ion from the surface they get attain some charge, either plus or minus. Next, electrophoresis. It is a phenomenon to find the charge on the colloidal particle, whether it is positively charged or negatively charged by applying electric current. Coagulation or precipitate. By removing the charge on the particle, the precipitation of molecule takes place. That is also called as coagulation. Here, one of the important rule employed during the coagulation of a colloidal particle that is called as Hardy-Schulz rule. Okay. We know that different electrolytes have got different coagulating power. Okay. The Hardy-Schulz rule says that whenever a colloid is present, to coagulate that means to remove the charge on that, the oppositely charged ion is useful. The oppositely charged ion is called as an active ion. Higher the charge on active ion, more is the coagulation power. So that is given by Hardy-Schulz rule. Okay. So coagulation power of electrolyte depends on the valency of the oppositely charged ion. Greater the valency of oppositely charged ion, more, more is the coagulating power. The minimum amount of electrolyte, remember millimoles per liter, that must be added to 1 liter of a colloidal solution so as to bring about complete coagulation is called as a coagulation or flocculation of a electrolyte. Okay. So remember flocculation value is directly proportional to 1 by coagulating power. So higher the flocculation value, lower is the coagulating power. Okay. Next. Emulsions, colloids in which both dispersed phase and dispersion medium are in liquid state, these are called as emulsions. Type of emulsions are oil in water, O bar W type, where dispersed phase is oil and medium is water. Next one, water in oil, W bar O, where dispersed phase is water and medium is oil. So, 
oil in water type example milk vanishing cream while water in oil type example is butter cream etc emulsification means process of making an emulsion is called as emulsification here emulsifying agent used to stabilize the emulsion in forming or in and interfacial film between the suspended particle and the medium for example soaps and detergents are called emulsifying agents if you study the applications of colloid colloids have got more applications for example in the case of industries uh, electrostatic precipitator poisonous gases coming out from the chimneys can be uh, prevented by using this technique colloidal due to the charge on the collide purification of drinking water by adding alum to the uh, muddy water which makes the settle down the muddy particles then in the medicinal field and we can find many applications for the collide so under this surface chemistry we can say that there are three categories one is adsorption second one is catalyst third one is colloids okay okay students let us discuss some questions okay first one which of the following statements is not correct about adsorption and absorption first one a in adsorption the substance is concentrated only at the surface while in absorption it is uniformly distributed in the bulk b adsorption is instant instantaneous while absorption is a slow process c a substance can be adsorbed as well as absorbed simultaneously and the process is called desorption d only gases are adsorbed while solids and liquids are absorbed the phenomena phenomenon of adsorption says that the molecules get adsorbed on the surface it may be gases liquids or solid adsorbed on the solid surface so we can say that option d is the correct answer okay not correct is given answer is d because in adsorption the substance is con concentrated only at the surface while in absorption uniformly distributed in the bulk s yes, that is correct during adsorption it takes place adsorption is instantaneous fast process adsorption is a fast process while absorption is a slow process s yes, that is also correct a substance can be adsorbed as well as absorbed simultaneously and the process is called as desorption as the substance can be adsorbed as well as absorbed simultaneously the process is called it should be sorption this is, should be sorption only gases are adsorbed while solids and liquids are absorbed no gases liquids solids can be adsorbed on the solid surface option d is the correct one okay next one for friendly adsorption isotherm a graph of log here it is missing log p log p is plotted sorry one minute here we know that in the case of friendlich's adsorption isotherm we know that x by m is equal to k into p to the power 1 by n by taking logarithm on both side log x by m is equal to log k plus 1 by log p okay idige yav equation follow madutte y is equal to m x plus c okay so along y axis we have to take log x by m along y axis along x axis we have to take log p so we will get a straight line which intersects y axis so slope is m so in the equation m is nothing but 1 by n c is nothing but y intercept so this is y intercept the question is 
for Flendlick's adsorption isotherm, the graph of log x by m, not log p, log x by m is plotted against log p. The slope of the line and its y-axis intercept respectively corresponds to, okay, slope, slope is what? 1 by n, okay, and the slope and the y-axis intercept is log k, so 1 by n log k, so option C is the correct one, okay, let's see, yes, so answer is C, okay, so this is answer 1 by n and log k. 1 by n is slope, log k is a y intercept. Okay. Let's move to the next question. That is third one. During adsorption of a gas on a solid, G is more than 0, H is more than 0, S is more than 0. Second option. G is less than 0, H is less than 0, S is less than 0. Third option, G is less than 0, H is more than 0, S is more than 0. Option D, G is less than 0, H is less than 0, S is less than 0. As I said in that during the explanation of synopsis, during adsorption of a gas and solid, always energy, Enthalpy and entropy. All are decrease. Okay. So we can say that decrease means becomes less than 0. So decreases delta G less than 0 or G is less than 0. H is delta H is negative or H is less than 0. Delta S negative or S is less than 0. Option D is the correct one. C the answer. Okay. Correct. During adsorption, here adsorption, free energy, enthalpy and entropy decreases. Okay. Let us move to the next one. Which of the following is not a property of a physical adsorption? It results in unimolecular layer. Greater the surface area, more the adsor adsorption. Lower the temperature, more the adsorption. No appreciable activation energy is required. Question, which of the following is not a property? Not a property. Okay. So, we know that physical adsorption and chemical adsorption, if you look at the difference, physical adsorption, multi-layer is possible. Chemical adsorption, unilayer is possible. Surface area, as we know that, greater the surface area, more is the adsorption. Lower the temperature, more is the adsorption. Why? In the physical adsorption, as the temperature rises, desorption may be possible. So, lower temperature favors the physical adsorption. No appreciable activation is required. Correct. So, answer is option 1. Okay. Option A, physical adsorption results into multi-molecular layers on adsorbent surface under high pressure. Okay. Next one. Hydrogenation of vegetable oils occurs in the presence of finely divided nickel as a catalyst. The reaction is hydrogenation of oil. Okay. Oil, generally they are present in liquid. Hydrogenation means it is addition of hydrogen gas. In the presence of nickel, okay, so the process here, nickel is solid, here liquid, gas, all are in different phases. So which is option? Enzyme catalyst reaction? No, it's a nickel is a catalyst, it's not enzyme. Liquid catalyzed reaction? No, it is solid. Heterogeneous catalyst is S. Homogeneous catalyst? No, they are different. So answer is? Heterogeneous catalysis. Let's check the answer. Yes. Heterogeneous. Generally, vegetable oils are liquid, hydrogen gas and a nickel catalyst. Hydrogen is a gas, nickel catalyst is a solid. So, it is an example for heterogeneous catalysis. Okay. Let us move to the next one. Zeta potential. What is zeta potential? See, first I will explain this. What is zeta potential? Zeta potential means... 
it is a potential develop due to the difference in the fixed layer and mobile layer see when we are charge separation two different charge collides are present one is charge present in the that is fixed it is fixed layer another one is moving or whatever may be charge so this is mobile or diffused layer diffused layer this is charge is fixed so this is the potential develop potential difference developed between them is called as a electrokinetic potential or zeta potential okay electrokinetic potential or zeta potential so let us discuss potential required to bring about coagulation of a colloid potential required to give particle a speed of 1 cm per second potential difference between fixed charged layer and the diffused layer having opposite charges potential energy of the colloidal particles so which is answer then if this is the case there is a difference so option c potential difference between fixed charged layer it is a fixed one and diffused layer having opposite charges so let us see the answer yes c zeta potential is the potential difference between the fixed charged layer and the diffused layer having opposite charges okay next move to the next question that is among the following the ion which will be more effective for flocculation of ferric hydroxide sole first you should remember what is the charge on the ferric hydroxide sole so ferric hydroxide sole which is a positively charged it which is positively charged sole so we know that whenever positive charge is present to coagulate it we need negatively charged active ion in the negatively charged active ion which possess more charge it is more effective so the question is among the following ion which will more effective for flocculation of ferric hydroxide sole means one is phosphate ion in one is sulfate in another sulfide another one is nitrate here phosphate ion is having 3 minus charge sulfate ion is having 2 minus charge sulfite ion is also having 2 minus charge nitrate is having 1 minus charge Hi, according to hardy schulz rule higher is the charge on active ion more is the coagulating power so higher charge is on phosphate ion so we can say that phosphate ion is more effective okay so answer is a let's check okay yes ferric hydroxide sole is positively charged it is flocculated by negatively charged sole which possesses more negative charge okay let us move to the next question that is eighth one which of the following is not a characteristic characteristic of chemis option first one adsorption is specific heat of adsorption is of the order 200 kilojoule per mole adsorption is irreversible adsorption may be multi-molecular layer we know the characteristics of chemical adsorption during chemical adsorption strong bond is formed between the adsorbate and adsorbent since a strong bond is formed it is irreversible heat of adsorption in the range of 80 to 240 kilojoule okay here it is given 200 okay so if you see the all the characteristics adsorption is specific okay particular type of uh, reaction only take uh, adsorb sorry particular type of molecules can take place for the uh, chemisorption then heat of adsorption correct adsorption is irreversible correct last one adsorption may be multi molecular layers no adsorption takes place in the chemical adsorption it is mono layer unimolecular layer so option is d is correct c s chemis option forms unimolecular or one layer okay let us move to the next question question number nine
Okay. Which of the following statement? Not correct for chemis option as well as physics option. Okay. Physical adsorption occurs at low temperature and chemis option occurs at all temperature. Magnitude of chemis option decreases with rise in temperature while physics option increases with rise in temperature. Chemis option is irreversible, physics option is reversible. In physics option, active energy is in low while in chemis option it is high. So answer is already given, it is B. Why? Because we know that magnitude of chemis option decreases with rise in temperature. No. As a temperature rises, chemis option takes place easily while physics option favors at a low temperature. So option B is the correct answer. Okay. Next one. The cause of Brownian moment which is not shown by true solution or suspensions is due to. We know that Brownian moment is the zigzag moment of colloidal particles. First one. Balanced bombardment of particles by molecules of the dispersion medium. Attractive forces between dispersed phase and dispersion medium. Larger size of the particles due to which, due to which they keep colliding and settling down. And last one is conversion of conversion currents formed in the soul. So we know that Brownian moment is cause for the Brownian moment is first one unbalanced bombardment of particles by molecules of the dispersion medium, which is not possible in true solution. The bombardment molecule do not take place in the case of true solution. So option A is the correct one. Yes. Brownian moment is due to the unbalanced bombardment of particles by the molecules of the dispersion medium. Okay. Next, let us move to the next one. Next question. Which of the following is not a correct match? Butter, oil in water type emulsion. Vanishing cream, oil in water type emulsion. Milk, oil in water type emulsion. Cold cream is water in oil type emulsion. So which is the correct answer? We know that it is butter. Butter is water in oil type emulsion. So oil is a medium here butter in the case of butter oil is a medium and uh, water is the dispersed phase. So let's check the answer. Yes A in butter oil is the medium and dispersed phase is water. Okay let's move to the next question. At CMC, the surfactant molecules, CMC means what? Critical measles concentration. Okay. What happens during CMC? A. Decompose. B. Become completely soluble. C. Associate. D. Dissociate. We know that at critical measles concentration, what happens? The molecule come closer. That is aggregate. So we can say that associate. At CMC, the molecule, since it comes under associated molecule category only, that is why we can say that associate, they associate, okay. So at CMC, association takes place, okay. Next. The colloidal solutions of gold prepared by different methods are of different types, means sorry, different colors because of, means uh, Due to variable valency of gold, different concentration of gold particles, impurity is produced by different methods, different diameters of colloidal particles. Okay. So, colloidal solution can be prepared by different methods by of different colors because we know that the color, it is a due to the size of the particles and how the observer uh, observes the light. So, that is why gold looks in different color due to the different diameters of colloidal gold particles. Okay. Let's see the answer. Yes. D. Color of solution depends upon the size and shape of the colloidal particles and on the way an observer receives the light. So, answer D is the correct option. 
Bredig's arc method can be used to prepare colloidal solution of which of the following? We know that Bredig's arc method is applicable for noble metals like platinum or silver, gold, etc. But it is not applicable for iron because it easily undergo oxidation. So it is not applicable for iron. Okay. So the answer is B. Bredig's arc method is used to prepare colloidal solutions of metals but it cannot be applied for those which get easily oxidized like iron. Okay. Next one. When the dispersion medium in a colloidal system is taken as gas, it is refer referred to as, okay, when the dispersion medium is water, then it is called as aquasol. When it is benzene, it is benzol. When it is alcohol, it is alcosol. Okay, here, when dispersion medium is taken as a gas, gas means a, it is a air or we can say that it is aerosol okay so answer is c aerosol whenever the dispersion medium is gas the soul is called aerosol okay next which of the following statements is correct first one true solutions are able to pass through filter paper and not in semi permeable membrane Colloidal particles are able to pass through filter paper and not in semi-permeable membrane. But both true and colloidal particles are able to pass through filter paper and semi-permeable membrane. Both true and colloidal particles are not able to pass through filter paper and semi-permeable membrane. As I said in the beginning, true solutions, true solutions, and colloids can be distinguished by using some of the characteristics like uh, one is depending on size, one is depending on size, next one their characteristics like Tyndall effect, Brownian moment etc. Okay, let us discuss the size. As I said in the beginning, the size of the true solutions are less than 1 nanometer, means their diameter. While that of colloids is 1 nanometer to 1000 nanometer. So, since the size of true solutions is very small, they can pass through semi-permeable membrane because its pore structure is so small. While filter paper, its pore structure is large. So, True solution particles can pass through both semi-permeable as well as filter paper. But case, in the case of colloids, we know that properties of uh, sorry, purification of colloids can be done by dialysis. Why we are employing dialysis? Because in the dialysis, the excess charge present on the colloid can be removed by taking colloidal solution in the uh, semi permeable membrane bag. In the semi permeable membrane bag, what happens? Only true solution particle can pass through while colloid remain in the bag itself. So that is the difference between colloidal solution and true solution. So we can say that first one, which is the which of the following statement is correct? So true particles are able to pass through filter paper and not in semi-permeable membrane. No, it can pass through semi-permeable membrane also. Colloidal particles are, are able to pass through filter paper, not in semi-permeable membrane. Yes, this may be correct. Both true and colloidal particles are able to pass through filter paper as well as semi -permeable. No, not possible. Both true and colloidal particles are not able to pass through filter paper and semi-permeable membrane. No. So, answer is B. Okay, answer B. Colloidal particles can pass through ordinary filter paper and not through semi-permeable membrane. Okay, so that is the answer, answer B. Next, as isoelectric point, colloidal particles move towards oppositely charged electrode during electrophoresis. 
colloidal particles move towards oppositely similarly charged electrode during electrophoresis colloidal particle do not move towards any electrode during electrophoresis ph of medium becomes 7 we know that electrophoresis it is a method of method to find the charge on the particle we know that a u shaped it is taken and here colloidal solution is introduced from the another end okay here cathode and anode are taken depending on the charge on the colloidal particles they move to opposite charge end so we can say that it is electrophoresis is used to find the charge on the collide here as I, at isoelectric point what happens they neither move towards anode nor to cathode okay so option which one is correct one colloidal particles do not move towards an, any electrode during electrophoresis so option c is the correct one let's check that one yes isoelectric point is the ph at which colloidal particle do not move under the influence of the electric field okay next let us move to the 18th question which of the following statements is not true for a lyophilic soul the coagulation of this soul is reversible in nature it can be easily solvated it carries no charge it is not very stable in a solvent lyophilic souls it is a classification based on the attraction between the dispersed phase and dispersion medium whenever there is a more attraction between dispersed phase and dispersion medium particle that is called as lyophilic where there is less or no attraction then it is called as lyophobic see here the coagulation of the soul is reversible yes we know that is it it easily prepared and it is reversible also next it can be easily solvated yes so there is more attraction between the medium particle so it get easily hydrated or solvated it carries no charge yes it is a stable cho no charge okay no, not uh, no charge it is not very stable uh, very stable in a solvent no it is highly stable why because there exists a more force of attraction between lyophilic soul and uh, sorry dispersed phase and dispersion medium so option d is the correct one okay yes it lyophilic Felix souls are quite stable because of high extent of solvation. Okay. Next one. Flocculation value is expressed in terms of millimoles per liter, mole per liter, grams per liter, mole per milliliter. Flocculation value, the definition is, it is the number of millimoles per liter of a active ion required to coagulate a 1 liter of colloidal solution in two hours so unit of this one is flocculation value is millimoles per liter okay so s answer is a flocculation value of an electrolyte is measured in terms of millimole per liter next one flocculation okay that's over Gelatin is often used as an ingredient in the manufacture of ice cream for first one causing mixture to solidify improving the flavor stabilizing the colloidal system and preventing the crystal growth preventing the formation of collide okay so gelatin why gelatin is used as a ingredient in the manufacture of ice cream so first one causing mixture to solidify no Improving the flavor for flavoring other agents are added. Stabilizing the colloidal system and preventing the crystal go growth. So, gelatin is a emulsifying stabilizing agent for the ice cream. It prevents the growth of the crystal. That is why option C is the which one answer? Option C. Okay. Gelatin acts as a protective colloid in the manufacture of ice cream. Okay. Next one. Ferric chloride is applied to stop bleeding from fresh cuts because, okay, here hemoglobin, blood is a colloidal system. We know that blood is a colloidal, colloidal system which is 
negatively charged which is negatively charged so negatively charged collides can be precipitated by using positively charged collide why ferric chloride is used ferric chloride here iron carries fe3 plus higher the charge more is the coagulating power so we can say that in the uh, case of bleeding means uh, bleeding from the fresh cards we can prevent it by using FeCl3 so option is Fe3 plus coagulate blood which is a negatively charged soul Cl minus are cause coagulation of blood FeCl3 reacts with constituents of blood blood absorbs FeCl3 so option which one is correct option A is correct since it is negatively charged soul sorry Fe3 plus ions from FeCl3 cause a coagulation of a negatively charged blood soul. Then put it blood is a negatively charged soul. Next, on adding few drops of dilute HCl to freshly precipitated ferric hydroxide, a red colored colloidal solution is obtained. This phenomenon is known as, okay. On adding few drops of dilute HCl to freshly prepared precipitate ferric hydroxide. Freshly prepared the ferric hydroxide is dilute HCl. Dilute HCl and tail detection talagogudan tail it is a electrolyte. Okay. So electrolyte is added. A red colored colloidal solution. Precipitate colloidagi convert. We know that. Conversion of freshly prepared precipitate into colloidal solution is called as a peptization. So, this phenomenon is called as peptization. What do you mean by dialysis? Dialysis is one of the methods for the uh, sorry, purification of colloid. Dur uh, during dialysis, the extra charge present on the colloid is removed. What is protective action? Protective action means to Protect the uh, lyophobic collide, lyophilic souls are added, that is protective action. Okay, dissolution means dissolution of a collide. Okay, so option is A. So, formation of colloidal solution by adding few drops of an electrolyte to freshly prepared precipitate is known as peptization. Next question The stability of lyophilic colloid is due to which? of the following charge on their particles large size of their particles small size of their particles a layer of dispersion medium okay the stability of lyophilic colloid is due to which of the following we know that a lyophilic colloid and you hit the contrary they are stable if water is the medium they form sheath around it which protects the colloid by undergoing precipitation or coagulation and that is water or any whatever the way the solvent it is taken it protects. So if this is a lyophilic colloid it forms a protective sheath around this one this is called as a protective action or and we can say that the stability that is why it's stable it do not undergo coagulation by adding a electrolyte so we can say that the stability of lyophilic colloid is due to which of the following means that is a layer of dispersion medium it forms a layer around it so option d is the correct one yes lyophilic colloids are highly solvated hence stable they are stable okay let's move to the next question in which of the following tyndall effect is not observed in which of the following tyndall effect is not observed okay starch soul emulsions sugar solutions gold soul okay tyndall effect is observed in all the colloidal system starch is an example for a colloid system which is a macromolecular collide Emulsion, which is a liquid in liquid, liquid dispersed phase and liquid dispersion medium, which is a colloidal system. Sugar solution, sugar solution is not a colloidal solution, it is true solution. 
gold soul anyhow it is a colloidal solution so in all the colloidal solution tindall effect is observed but not observed in sugar solution so option c is the answer yes sugar solution is a true solution and true solutions do not show tindall effect okay next one which of the following is an associated colloid first one protein in water protein and water soap and water rubber and benzene and milk we know that associated colloid is depending on it is a classification of colloid based on the size of the particle there are three types one is macromolecular micromolecular and associated colloid here associated colloid we know that cmc that is critical mesial formation etc this that is due to the in particular uh, uh, colloid due to their particular solvent okay so here soap in water forms a mesial soap in water soap in water forms mesial mesial formation takes place so it is a associated colloid so answer is soap solution in water example for associated colloid okay next one which of the following statements is not correct the efficiency of a solid catalyst depends on upon its surface area catalyst operates by providing alternate path for the reaction that involves a lower energy of activation catalyst lowers the energy of activation of the forward reaction catalyst does not affect the overall enthalpy change of a reaction if you study the characteristics of catalyst catalyst do not start a reaction one and catalyst increases both forward and backward reaction speed of the both forward as well as backward reaction catalyst increases the rate of the reaction by taking an alternate path where energy of activation is less so we can say that during the whenever a catalyst is used enthalpy change catalyst does not affect the overall enthalpy change of the reaction if it's a equilibrium reaction whenever a catalyst is used the equilibrium reached reached may be earlier due to the increase in the rate of forward as well as backward reaction so catalyst increases the rate of the forward as well as backward reaction so we can say that catalyst lowers the energy of activation of the forward reaction is given not only forward also the backward reaction so option c is not correct so c catalyst effect the energy of activation of both forward and backward reaction means see here here if you use a catalyst without catalyst if the reaction takes place like this if you take reaction progress in along x axis and energy along y axis if this is the path without catalyst without catalyst this is the path of the reaction okay and this is energy of activation without catalyst or uncatalyzed reaction if a catalyst is used the reactant molecule starting point is same ending point is same but path is different like this it is possible so this is the energy of activation of catalyzed reaction we can say that whenever catalyst is present it take an alternate path where energy of activation is less here energy of activation was more so we can say that so energy of activation lowers is lowered by catalyst but but for both forward as well as backward reaction so option c next one in certain cases the rate of reaction increases with the time this phenomenon is known as in certain cases the rate of the reaction increases with the time first one induced catalysis catalytic inhibition catalysis catalytic promotion what do you mean by induced catalysis induced catalysis means 
during a reaction if reaction takes place more than one step one of the step formed catalyzes the another next step so that is called as a induced catalysis catalytic inhibition inhibition means reduction so which decreases the rate of the reaction autocatalysis means what one of the product formed itself increases the reaction catalytic promotion means which increases the efficiency of the catalyst so we can say that in certain cases the rate of reaction increases with the time means their product is formed that product formed which increases the rate of the reaction after some time so answer is auto catalysis okay let's see the answer yes in auto catalysis the rate of reaction increases with the time since one of the product act as a catalyst okay so let's move to the next one 28 according to the adsorption theory of catalysis the speed of the reaction increases because in the process of adsorption the activation energy of the molecules becomes large adsorption produces heat which increases the speed of the reaction adsorption lowers the heat which increases speed of the reaction the concentration of reactant molecules at the active centers of the catalyst becomes high due to adsorption so we can say that adsorption theory of catalyst says that the reactant molecules are concentrated at the active centers what do you mean by active centers active centers means these are the imperfections cracks where the catalytic activity is more okay so option d the concentration of reactant molecules at the active centers of the catalyst becomes high due to adsorption <coughs> see according to adsorption theory of catalysis reactant molecules get adsorbed on active centers of the catalyst as soon as the concentration increases the rate of the reaction also increases okay let's move to the next question alum helps in purifying water by forming complex with clay particles sulfate part which combines with the dirt and removes it aluminum which coagulates the muddy particles or mud particles making mud water soluble okay here alum is used for the purification of drinking water if a drinking water contain muddy particles the muddy particles or mud particles are negatively charged colloidal system we know that for the coagulation of negatively charged particles here muddy particles to make them settle down we have to use a active ion which is positively charged it must be positively charged positively charged alum alum contains a composition is aluminum sulfate ktso4 24h2 so aluminum is positively charged so so aluminum which coagulates the muddy particles so option c is the correct one yes alum help in purifying water by giving al3 plus ion which give coagulate negatively charged mud particles okay let us move to the next question point out the false statement brownian moment and tindall effect are shown by colloidal systems gold number is a measure of the protective power of a lyophilic colloid the colloidal should solution of a liquid in liquid is called gel hardy schulz rule is related to related with the coagulation see the question is which is the false statement if you see the characteristics of a colloidal particle they show brownian moment and tendal effect are shown by colloidal system that is correct gold number is a measure of protective power of lyophilic colloid gold number as i said it is used to measure the Uh, protect uh, this one protective action of uh, colloids hardy schulz rule is related to coagulation yes hardy schulz rule says that higher is the power of active ion more is the coagulation so it is related to coagulation 
Next one. The colloidal solution of a liquid in liquid is called gel. We know that liquid is dispersed phase. In liquid medium, then it is called as emulsion. Then what is gel? Gel is liquid in solid. Liquid is dispersed phase, medium is solid, then it is called gel. So option C is a false statement. Let us check this one. Yes, colloidal solution of a liquid in liquid is called as a emulsion. Okay, let us move to the next one. A finely divided state of catalyst is more efficient because in this state, less reactive centers are formed, more surface area is available, more energy stored in the catalyst, none of this. A finely divided state of a catalyst. For example, iron is in the finely divided state in the manufacture of ammonium by Haber's process. What happens? Whenever a catalyst is used in the finely divided state, it occupies more surface area. So in the finely divided state, we can observe more surface area. So we can say that less reactive centers are formed. No, more reactive centers are formed. More surface area is available. X, yes, this is correct one. More energy stored in the catalyst. No, finally reward is also energy remains same. None of these. So option one is more surface area is available. Okay, let's check the answer. Yes, more the surface area, more effective will be the catalyst. Okay, let's move to the next one. Identify the correct statement regarding enzyme. Identify the correct statement regarding enzymes. Enzymes are specific biological catalysts that can normally function at very high temperature that is nearly 1000 Kelvin. Enzymes are specific biological catalysts that possess well defined active sites. Enzymes are specific biological catalysts that cannot be poisoned. Enzymes are normally heterogeneous catalysts that are very specific in action. Okay, we know that, sorry, okay, uh, we know that the characteristics of enzymes we have studied, it is a specific in action, it is highly efficient and they carry, highly efficient means they carry millions of reactions at a time, they are active under specific temperature, they are active under specific uh, pH, etc. So, here correct statement, enzymes are specific biological catalysts that cannot be function at very high, uh, can function at high temperature, no. For example, in the human body, the normal human temperature is 37 degrees centigrade. If it crosses more than that, enzymes are not active, okay, 1000 Kelvin, it's more, not possible. Next, enzymes are specific biological catalysts that cannot be poisoned, okay. Wrong. It can also poison. Catalytic poisons are present. Okay. Enzymes are normally heterogeneous catalysts that are very specific in their action. No, that is also wrong. Okay. So, correct statement is which one? Enzymes are specific biological catalysts that possess well-defined active sites. Whenever well-defined active sites are present or more active sites are present, the activity becomes more. Okay. So, option B is the correct one. Okay. Noble gases are adsorbed by okay, concentrated sulfuric acid, ferric hydroxide, anhydrous calcium chloride, activated charcoal. Noble gases are available in the atmospheric air. They are first isolated, separated. The isolation is carried out in the charcoal, that is coconut shell charcoal, that also coconut shell charcoal. So, Activated charcoal act as a good adsorbing agent, means a good adsorbent for which one? Noble gases, option D, activated charcoal. Okay, next. Gold number of protective colloid A, B, C and D are 0 0.50, 0 0.01, 0 0.10, and 0 0.005 respectively, the correct order of their protective powers. Okay, gold number, we know that gold, more is the gold number, lower is the protective action. 
protective action. So we can say that lower is the value of gold number, more is the protective action. They are inversely proportional to each other. If the value of gold number is very, very less means it is required in small quantity to uh, which one uh, to undergo coagulation. So we can say that higher is the value of gold number, lower is the protective action. Here gold numbers protective color ABCD is given the correct order of their protective powers which is having more power means which is having lower gold, uh, lower value of uh, gold number. So which is having lower value of gold number 0 0.50, 0 0.01, 0 0.10, 0 0 0.005. So we can say that last one 0 0.005 means that is for D last. Then slight more than that that is 0 0.01 that is B. Okay, next uh, less than that is little more than that is 0 0.10 that is C. Then highest one is A. So option which one? A is less than C, less than B, less than D. So option D is the correct answer. Okay, let's check. Yes, smaller the value of gold number greater will be the protecting power of the protective colloid. Okay, next let us move to the next one. In Langmuir's model of adsorption of gas on a solid surface, the rate of dissociation of adsorbed molecules from the surface does not depend on surface covered. The adsorption, of, adsorption at a single site on the surface may involve multiple molecules at the same time. The mass of gas striking a given area of surface is proportional to the pressure of the gas. The mass of gas striking at a given area of surface is independent of the pressure of the gas. So, we know that Langmuir's model of adsorption gas on a solid surface can be given by the expression X by M, where X is the amount of gas adsorbed on the unit mass of M of the adsorbent is equal to k dash p divided by 1 in plus k p, right. We know that when pressure is high, when pressure is high, k p becomes very high. So, 1 plus k p nearly equal to k p. So, the equation becomes x by m is equal to k dash p divided by k p. So, p and p get cancels. Only k dash by k remains which is nothing but constant. So, we can say that when pressure is high, amount of gas adsorbed on the surface of a adsorbent of mass m is independent on pressure means that is constant. When pressure is very low, when pressure is very low, we can say that when P is low, 1 plus Kp nearly equal to 1. So, X by M becomes equal to K dash P divided by 1 is equal to K dash P. So, we can say that X by M is directly proportional to P, sorry, X by M is directly proportional to P here, okay. So at low pressure, directly proportional P, high pressure, independent on pressure. So we can say that in Langmuir, sorry, in Langmuir model of adsorption of a gas on a solid surface, the mass of gas striking in a given area of surface is proportional to pressure of the gas, okay. So, that is assuming the formation of monolayer of the adsorbate on the surface of the adsorbent, it was derived by Langmuir that the mass of the gas adsorbed per gram of the adsorbent is related to the equilibrium pressure according to the equation x by m is equal to k, in, k dash p divided by 1 plus kp, where x is the mass of the gas adsorbed on mass m gram of the adsorbent, p is the pressure and k and k dash are the constant. Okay. So, 
this about the questions which are possible maybe this type of questions are possible under surface chemistry chapter so dear students uh, go through all the question more question and uh, some uh, class work uh, homework questions also will be given so go through them and solve the questions all the best for your CET NEET exam okay thank you